Hello everyone, and welcome to UC Merced. Today, we're going to recreate a famous thought experiment in physics proposed by Erwin Schrödinger. The famous Schrödinger's cat experiment, as it was called, was posed to explore the quantum weirdness that exists on very small scales. It all starts with some radioactive material placed inside a box. Suppose that this radioactive stuff gives off, on average, one particle every hour and that when a Geiger counter placed next to the radioactive stuff detects this particle, it will then cause a hammer to break open a vial of poison, killing a cat also placed nearby. Because the radioactive material and the cat are both placed inside a box, there is no way for us to see if the cat is alive or dead. So after waiting an hour, and without looking inside the box, the question is, is the cat alive or dead? The quantum mechanical interpretation of this paradox is that the cat is both alive and dead simultaneously. It is in what physicists call a superposition of states. So what are states? Well, states can be thought of as possible outcomes. The cat has the states of both alive and dead while it's in the box. It is sometimes represented by this symbol, called ket. We can use this to represent a possible state and this or this as another. Being in a superposition of states means that several states describe the entire system. In this case, we have the states of alive and dead fully describing the cat inside the box. For our experiment, we will use a bunker instead of a box and explosives instead of poison. And of course, we love cats here at UC Merced, so a spider will be used instead of a cat. Now let's place our spider and place the radioactive material and we will close the doors and wait and see what happens. If the radioactive material decays, it will cause the TNT to explode and kill the spider. If the radioactive material does not decay, that spider should still be alive when we open it up to check. Looks like this time the spider was not so lucky. Let's try again. After resetting the experiment with a new spider, it appears that this time, the spider is alive. Remember, before we actually open the doors and look, the spider is in a superposition of states, and when we look inside we are forcing nature to make a decision as to which state the spider is now in. Our observation collapses the system into one of the possible states. This still doesn't really explain how the spider or the cat is both dead and alive at the same time. We know that things can only be dead or alive. Zombies don't count. You are correct if you say that the cat or spider can only be either dead or alive. Being in a superposition of states is the realm of quantum mechanics. Yet the cat and spider are much larger than the atoms that quantum mechanics deals with. It might sound strange, but because the spider and the cat are so large, quantum mechanical interpretations can't apply to them, or any other large classical system. This is why Schrodinger's cat was proposed. It was to emphasize the difference between quantum mechanical and classical systems. In our setup, we made it so that classical events, the spider being dead or alive, are linked with quantum mechanical ones, the decaying of atoms. Our observation is not actually determining whether or not the spider is killed, but rather determining whether or not the atom has decayed and the TNT killed the spider. Another interpretation of this outcome is that our observation is not actually collapsing the system to either one of the states. What is happening is that both outcomes take place in parallel in different realities, and we just happen to be in one or the other. If we think about it closely, we may also be in a superposition of states. There is a state of us opening the doors and the spider is dead, or we open the doors and the spider is alive. Then who is observing us to determine which state we are in? 